It's something I want to press Howard on. Uh, Nuruddin mentioned urine rights management as an industry, the three of you guys here. And you all nodded in agreement when CI Plus was mentioned, which we advocate as a good move for the industry. This brings us on to standards per se. What type of standards are there? And as markets as we know, where the standards in markets, that's why they rapidly take off and evolve and really flourish. What do you think are going to be the standards for content protection? Can there be? Can, will there be, for example, the DECE and the ultraviolet brand? This is, a, I mean, how much time do we have? <laughs> as much time as you wish. <laughs> I, I think that, um, that obviously standards have a place and they've, you know, we, we all know that and have benefited from uh, you know, standards such as DVB over the years where, where um, you know, a common um, set of um, APIs and, and, and its interoperability has, has really worked enormously well for, every, for everybody in the industry. Um, I think attempts in the past to standardise uh, DRM or standardise CA and uh, I think is, is fraught with, with problems. Um, I think when it comes to security, um, the whole nature of security in, in the TV industry is how do you keep a secret? How do you make sure that um, if there is a problem in one, one market or on one device that it doesn't uh, domino on every device? And I think that is ultimately when you have one authority that is going to be responsible for licensing and for um, uh, ensuring robustness and, uh, and compliance, um, often you're, you're effectively um, doing away with responsibility. Um, and, and, and as a security company, we take responsibility. Mm. Um, and we stand by our security, and I think that that is the the ultimate uh, weakness in standardising um, DRM in, in terms of your question. Having said that, um, you know there there are many uh, players out there that either through um, enormous market presence or through um, um, you know, good packaging, such as DCE or other um, other standards, that that have a play in that market. And, and you know, we're we're being asked by our customers, um, that, for example, DC in the US, um, and we will we will support that, and we we will we will incorporate that into into our offer. But it's um, you know, in some ways, uh, you know, we we. You know, DRM is almost um, you know a, a zero billion dollar business, right? It's it's like, in some ways, yeah, like we'll give away the DRM yeah. um, because uh, you know we want to you know particular players want to try and um, you know enable the market. On the other hand, um, again, it comes back to how I get, how am I going to ensure that a service a service is being is being provided that is you know is reliable and 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 works for the yeah. for all the players in in that ecosystem. So. Um, you know, to, to give you the, the short answer of, you know, it, it's, yes, there mm. are standards, they have a place, they can be implemented and are being, I mean, in terms mm. of NDS, we do embrace them, um, but I don't think it answers every question. Fair. So you, I'll throw that back at you, know, to, you mentioned standards, will there ever be a GSM for? Yes, Viaxis, DRM everywhere, of course. Uh, no, I mean, just, just kidding, I mean, there is need for standards for interoperability because at the end, uh, uh, content has to be made available over a number but of devices. But as a DRM devices. provider, you can provide that interoperability. Yeah, I mean, you can you can uh, support multiple DR DRMs or, yes. or um, means for delivering content in different formats. Exa that's and, exactly and what. I, I don't yeah. see that that has to. No, no. I mean, be, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't think the standard has to apply to DRM as such because that's the area where there is a need for. Uh, 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 short te uh, also be reactive enough for uh, uh, pay TV and guest content service provider to and give them control over their business model and uh, and over the technology they need to drive the, the, their business. You mentioned DEC and ultraviolet. It's not a, a unique standard there. They are mentioning a number of there, and this is going to it's even there. It's about interoperability between yes, solutions. It is. It's not. And and uh, even such initiatives are in ultraviolet is pushing a given business model, which is, which is electronic sell through. Not all our uh, customers and content service provider are willing to do only electronic sell through. They want to be flexible on business model. So there is clearly no benefit from having a unique uh, DRM standard because uh, of the reason that uh, we recalled, which are dealing with life cycle of security that's. Um, naturally not consistent with the timing it requires to upgrade standards, etc. 
and also because uh, to give the uh, freedom for uh, pay TV and content service providers to deploy the, uh, their business model and differentiate the offer, they require a solution that are and user centric and operator centric that more than a standard that unify the experience and the offering for everyone. Which wrench this? What stand do you think a standard can emerge, Guy? I don't know. I, I think it's a very it's a very hard task to, to find someone who will take the, the real responsibility to, to create a standard for the DRM. Or it's not hard to find anyone that wants to do it. But to, to, to find uh, uh, something similar to the DVB forum that actually will make the standard uh, as a non-profit organization, because many of the initiatives that we actually see, like the DECE and such things, they are kind of bundled with the business model for uh, the consortium itself. And that makes it kind of a little bit harder to, to, to use it as a standard. Uh, and one of the big challenges with DRM is uh, what uh, what uh, Howard is touching here. This is zero. <laughs> it's no money business, and n not big money in in providing DRM systems right now. And everyone is doing that to protect also content that has not really high volume, and a high value. Uh, so it's it's not a big business to to provide the DRM system for anyone. But, right but in now. some ways, the whole OTT um, business is, is is emerging, and I think um, you know right now you, you could certainly consider that to be niche or a way of doing catch up and um, really maybe uh, reinventing rental, yeah, you know, but, reinventing um, you know the sort of on demand mm -hmm. into sort of an OTT rental type of, of, of model. But the, the, um, I think here and it will change. Here we, we can have a role because we then could. Uh, present solutions, security solutions, that will make uh, more valuable content available. Because what we see now is